Good afternoon and welcome to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. My name is Charles. Today's video, quarantine, what to expect in the coming days. So stay tuned. We got some stuff to cover. So as we all know, as they announced on the news this morning, uh, it is Tuesday. Happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. But it is Tuesday and they announced this morning that there's already 15 states where the National Guard and everything has been mobilized and is helping out the local and state governments to um, take care of their problems and set up triage and uh, feed people and so on and so forth. So it's only a matter of time. In some areas, it is already happening where they're starting to quarantine off areas. Um, we've all seen that on the news. Any news station you want to watch, take your pick. Um, but what I did is I prepared some stuff today. I'm going to be reading some of this stuff because I had a lot of stuff and it was easier for me to uh, make sure I wrote everything down so that I could um, make sure that I got everything out there and that I didn't forget anything that I wanted to cover. So on that note, we're going to get going on that. Um, the first thing that um, uh, you want to do is you want to be preparing yourself. Uh, your mission in survival situation is to stay alive. The assortment of thoughts and emotions you will experience in a survival situation can work for you or they can work against you. Fear, anxiety, anger, frustration, guilt, depression, and loneliness are all possible reactions to many of the stress factors common in a survival or an emergency situation. These reactions, when controlled in a healthy way, help to increase the likelihood of your survival and your families for that fact. When you cannot control these reactions in a healthy way, they can bring you to a standstill. They can bring you down, um, you're not thinking clearly, Instead of rallying your internal resources, you need to listen to your in, you need not listen to your internal fears. These fears will cause you to experience psychological defeat long before you physically succumb to the situation or emergency that is at hand. Remember, survival is natural to everyone. Being unexpected trust and thrown into a life or death struggle of survival is not good for the human spirit. Do not be afraid of your natural reaction to this unnatural situation. Prepare yourself to rule over these reactions so they serve you in an ultimate interest of staying alive and keeping a calm attitude. Um, going along with planning, um, first thing is, is you want to, you want to uh, take inventory. You want to take inventory on the things that you have, take inventory on um, all your, your medical supplies, your food products, your non-perishable food, what you have in your freezer, uh, your cleaning products, um, toilet paper, paper towels, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, the, the run on toilet paper is, is just getting out of hand. Um, but, you know, you, you've got to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're just like just running through the woods blind and you're going to be lost. So if you have a plan in place, and with a plan, if you know your grocery store, it makes an easy in, easy out, especially in, in these situations now where we are um, being told that you know we need to stay away from large crowds, larger than 10 people. So if you're going to the store, that's literally impossible because there's hundreds of people in there. Um, you might as well be going to a bar or restaurant and uh, at least you, you get to have a drink but they're closing all that down too. So you wanna make sure that you're taking inventory. And then when you get, once you're done with your inventory, 
you can take and start planning out your meals. See what you need, you know? Go through and tackle that whole thing, and then you, you make your grocery list, and only buy the essential stuff that you need. Remember, you have to think about the other people that are out there. We're all in this boat together. So if you're buying 30 of one thing, and you probably could only really need three or four, uh, just so that you can say that you have it or you feel comfortable because you have it is a whole different situation. Um, detailed planning uh, is an essential and important survival situations, including survival considerations and missions planning and enhancing your chances of survival in, if an emergency occurs. Um, I've done several different videos. Uh, one of my best videos that I have right now was my very first video that I did, which I think was, um, I look back now, it was horrible, but um, it was basic, right to the point on best canned goods for emergency situations. Now, if you go and you click on my channel and you go to, the, go to my videos and click all the way down, you'll see it's the first initial video that I put out. And um, over the last week or so, it has increased uh, almost 200 views. Um, but it just gives you the basics. It's, I just basically show you exactly you know, what you're looking for in, in a survival situation. So if you want to check that out, um, I'll try to put a link and uh, um, go and check that video out. Like I said, it was the first video I did. Um, um, one thing I want to talk about also is the difference between two types of people. Um, hoarders. When hard times come, a hoarder collects collection will have little to no value anyway, but a hoarder will never share that bounty or food or emergency supplies with the community and sometimes even family. They collect for themselves and themselves only and their needs, and it is compulsion. A prepper, on the other hand, collects preps for themselves, but also their family and community. Now, one thing to remember as a prepper, I guess that's what I am called, and there's a lot of us out there, um, I prep for basically hurricanes because of where I live here in Florida. Um, <clears throat> but those... Uh, those preps have now rolled into this emergency situation. Um, <clears throat> the difference is, is I'm more willing to help out a friend, and I've definitely been helping out family members because you know people can't get things, and um, I've had to take care of a few few things on that end, and um, that's the difference. You know, order somebody that's going into the store and they're buying 15 packs of toilet paper. Why? Why do you need 15 packs of toilet paper? Grab one or two and go, and let somebody else get one or two and go. And the, the big problem with that is, is in the very beginning, the store should have automatically put limits on all products, so there would have been enough to go around and we would be in the situation we're in. But that's for another video. Uh, survivalism. Survivalism is a movement of individuals or groups called survivalists or preppers, who actually prepare for emergencies, including the possibility just a disruption in social or political order or on scales from local to international survivalism also encompasses preparation for personal emergencies such as job loss or being stranded in the wild or under observed weather conditions. The emphasis is on self-reliance, stockpiling supplies and gaining survival knowledge and skills. Survivalists often acquire emergency medical and self-defense training, stockpiling food and water prepare to become self-sufficient. Now, I, when I do my, uh, all my preps and stuff, I do the old, you know, if it's buy one, get one, well, the, the one I've got for free, that goes into my emergency supply. I don't go out there and buy 15 cans of one thing at one time. I just don't do it. I've been building my supply up for six months, seven, since June last year. So, you know, I mean, I've been working on this and I've just been slowly building it up. And for one, it doesn't break the bank. And for two, you know, I'm not a hoarder. 
you know, there's other people that need things and, you know, I just, you know, I grab a couple things here or there and that's it. Um, isolation. We're going to talk a little bit about the isolation part that could be coming up. Um, you've got all the kids in a lot of states are out of school. The schools, have, you know, the schools are going to be closed for an extended period of time until April, you know. Um, and if they do put a quarantine down on your area or a national quarantine down, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, that's going to affect them a really lot, um, especially if they have anxiety and things like that nature. Uh, they're not used to being um, basically confined to their home and not having the uh, feeling of the communication between humans. You know, we have, you know, cell phones and you can video chat and everything else, but that one-on-one -on -one communication, um, you're going to lose it. So isolation rep represents one of the several measures that can be taken to implement infection control. This is the reason why the prevention cont contagious diseases from being spread from a patient to other patients. <clears throat> isolation is also most commonly used when a patient is known to have a contagious trance Minimal from person to person, which we're into now, a viral or bacterial illness. Special equipment is used in the management of patients in the various forms of isolation. Some of this stuff, you, a lot of you may already have, or maybe it's something that you may want to get in case you have to go out. But the most commonly include items of personal protection equipment are gown, masks, and gloves. <clears throat> then we go to social isolation okay so now you know you're not being able to go anywhere you can't you know now you know to here you can't go out and sit down and have dinner you can might be able to go pick it up but that's about it so your social isolation is a state of complete or near complete lack of contact between an individual and society it differs from loneliness which reflects temporary and involuntary lack of contact with humans in the world <clears throat> um, that's going to be a tough one for a lot of people, but depending on how well they can contain this and how long this goes on, we could be looking at, you know, the, the whole social um, isolation lasting well into the summer. The president said the other day, July, August. So that's quite a long time. Then the last part of this is the emotional isolation. Uh, the, the emotional isolation is really tough on people because um, people just, you start to break down, you think you're going crazy because you know, you, you, especially if you live by yourself or something, you know, you have nobody to talk to or anything else, you know? But emotional isolation is a state of isolation where one may have a well-functioning social network but feels emotionally separated from others. Um, on that note, you're being, it's not that you can't go out and be social, you're being told you can't go out and be social. So now you don't have a choice in the matter. Uh, Population-based research indicates that only five Middle-aged or elderly men, 50 to 80 years old, are emotionally isolated, defining and have no one in whom they can confide. One of those who do have someone in who they can confide with, eight out of 10 confide only with their partner. Um, so, you know, like if you have your, your spouse um, or your girlfriend or um, a best friend, if you have roommates, you know, whatever it may be. Um, infectious diseases transmissions can occur and, and the way they can occur is how we all know right now they're all airborne infections they spread of you know shortness of breath uh, vehicular transmissions which involves containment objects which basically is your planes trains and automobiles um, in which you know they and cruise lines you know they shut down cruise lines airlines have canceled tons of flights um, you know that whole nine yards the airborne transmission which involves the spread of infection particles through the air um, you know it's it's uh, uh, that's what we're dealing with right now it's person to person you know it went from uh, animal to person 
it transferred over into the population and here we are today. Uh, from a person's home, school, work site, uh, healthcare facilities, gyms, and other shared spaces within the community. Even if a person takes all the necessary, necessary, I'll spit it out, precautions to protect oneself from disease, such as being up to date with vaccines and practicing good hygiene, he or she can still get sick. Some people may not be able to protect themselves from disease and may develop serious complications if they contract the disease. Therefore, disease isolation is an important infection prevention and controlled practice used to protect others from the disease. Disease isolation can help prevent healthcare acquired infections of hospitals being overrun. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is the fear factor of this whole thing. Fear. Fear is the, our emotional response to danger and dangerous circumstances that we believe have the potential to cause death, injury, or illness. This harm is not just limited to physical damage. The threat to your emotional and mental well-being can generate fear as well. If you are trying to survive, fear can have a positive function if it has encouraged you to be cautious in the situations that you are in, meaning that you're not going out and you're not uh, participating, you know, they've already closed, like baseball games have been pushed back, basketball games are canceled, soccer's canceled, you know, so, you know, you're not being, you're not going out, you're not engaging into large crowds and everything else and exposing yourself to something that you really don't want. Nobody wants this bug. You know, everybody's trying to stay away from the bug and take all precautions to do so. But that fear factor is still there in the back of your mind every time you walk out your front door because you just don't know. Um, I have done some videos. Uh, two days ago I did uh, the, the things you need to know if you're quarantined. You may want to check one of those videos out. You know, it could help you on your planning. Um, two weeks ago I did a news flash and I really... That's when it first started coming into California. They had their first case, and I brought that to you guys. Um, you know, I've been trying to stay on top of this. Um, uh, two months ago, I did the food shortages for 2019 and 2020. Um, you might want to look at that one because I had some data and stuff from the government and from the Farming Association and everything else. and. Uh, that part of it isn't looking good, but you won't hear anything about that now. And um, on, on that note, everybody just needs to be safe. Everybody just needs to take a deep breath. Don't be a hoarder. Don't go out there and clear off the whole shelf into your cart and buy all the products and everything else. You know, give other people a chance to get, you know, some supplies and stuff because you don't know. It could just be you and say your wife or whatever and you're taking 10, 12 cans of one thing and the guy behind you that probably really could need it's got five or six kids. You know, and in this situation, you know, a lot of people have this mindset that, you know, all they care about is themselves. And you're wrong if you care, if that's all you care about is yourself, then I feel really bad for you because in this type of a situation, the only way that we, as human beings on this planet, not even this country, but on this planet, can get through this situation is if we stick together and if we come together as a community and help out our family, our family, our friends, our loved ones, and we will survive. So on that note, until next time, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. If you enjoyed my video, if you got anything to say, put it in the comments section down below. Give me a like, hit subscribe, and until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.